Rod, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is very touching. I am going to repay it badly. Uh, can I ask a very simple question? And I would like you all to answer honestly. How many people here would call themselves professional or members of the profession? Carry on. Oh, surely far more. Well, maybe, maybe you're liars, but there we are. Um, because it seems to me that the term profession and the consequences of it lie at the basis of not what Rod was talking about in terms of the intellectual origins of hyperliberalism, or more usually known as woke, but professionalism and the professions are, and the professionalization of our society is the super spreader of woke. That is the essential problem, and that is why we have been taken over and penetrated in the fashion that we have. Let's begin by putting, as it were, the intellectual position first, uh, what has gone wrong, what has got wrong with academic life, and uh, what has gone wrong uh, with social analysis, what has gone wrong uh, with politics, with so much else. I would like to list three things. The first is that there has been the abandonment, and this is the fundamental, there has been an abandonment of the notion of truth. Truth has to be the absolute central criterion of Western civilization. It is what created the extraordinary expansion of the West, which of course is the making of modernity, and we're in the very center of it, literally here in Westminster. It is the ability to discriminate fact from fiction. It is the notion of testable, authentic, empirically based truth. That notion has been abandoned in favour of a wave of relativism. I remember vividly, um, and some of you may have read this, I've used the example, indeed, heard it on my YouTube. Uh, I, I began with it. I had the most extraordinary experience at a country house party uh, last summer when I encountered a very uh, elegant, God, he was good looking, grand young man, a very, a to totally fanciful. But the problem was, I'm talking physically, his mind was a cesspit. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned I believed in truth. He looked at me with complete blankness. This was a product of Oxford and Eton. He had never had the notion that things were true and false. Everything for him was merely relative. So that's one position. The next is the relentless solipsism and egoism of modern society, something, of course, that the Social Democratic Party agitates about. And the final thing, which goes very closely with the solipsism and egotism or egoism, is the extraordinary emotionalism, the cult of unreason. So what we're actually living through at the moment is very much the equivalent of the romantic movement of the early 19th century, or indeed the religious revivals of the 19th century, which of course colour very powerfully so much of what is going on. Rod referred to heresy, persecution, condemnation, denunciation, and so on, at the quasi-displaced quasi religion. Now, why do I say, why do I then advance the charge that it is the notion of the profession which has acted as the super spreader of these ideas. Let's first of all interrogate the very idea of the professions. They normally are treated very seriously and respectfully. This should not be the case. Their origins lie in the three S's. Their origins are snobbery, slavery, and superstition. Let us analyze. How many of you here has bedtime reading? Uh, those, did anybody here do classics? Anybody familiar with Lewis and Short, the magnificent Latin dictionary? It, it contains one of the most important articles on Western civilization, which is the article on Ars Artis, art. And if you actually look at it, this takes you into the heart of everything we're talking about. Rod used the word liberalism correctly as a sneer and denunciation. What does it come from? It comes from the Latin for free, because the whole of the classical world is divided into the free and the unfree. 
This, everybody agitates about the marginal effects of slavery because that's all it is in 18th century Britain. Rome was founded, built, shaped, determined by slavery. And the word liberal means those jobs that are done by people who are not slaves. The important thing then is to separate out what was regarded as being appropriate for the free and what was appropriate for the slave. It is, by the way, something that comes very, very near to um, the, the whole notion of the North uh, and, uh, uh, and levelling up and whatever. Because, broadly speaking, the liberal professions, the free professions, are the ones that are essentially literary, that are based on words. They are things like a lawyer, an architect, not actually an artist, not, not a sculptor, they're a, a doctor. Uh, they're, uh, uh, sorry, the, the artist and sculptor are performed by slaves, so the Italian Renaissance uh, uh, produces a wonderful sleight of hand in which it lifts them up. So these professions then, the liberal professions, enjoy this extraordinary snobbery. What is the other side? The other side is everything to do with your hand. It is everything to do with work. It is getting dirty. It is making things. The term of absolute abuse uh, in Latin, or still more in Greek, is banosic. That is being a smith, being a mechanic, being an engineer. It's why Shakespeare talks about the rude mechanical. Why why the French, in a very different sense, when they're making them sexy, when a French woman talks about mon mec, you know, a, a mechanique, um, who of course you know, is a sexy working man and, uh, and satisfies in all sorts of unintellectual ways. So we've then got this very close association of snobbery and slavery lying at the heart of the profession. Where does the superstition come in? It comes, of course, because the actual model of the professions, as it comes down to us, as always, is a product of the combination of the classical world and Christianity. The model profession is the church. That is the foundation profession. And if you think about it, that gives you the notion of why I think they are so dangerous. The professions embody what? They embody restrictive practices. They embody a notion of self-virtue. And they embody a notion of self-regulation, all of which, as Margaret Thatcher once pointed out, are conspiracies against the public interest. And it is the fatal, the extraordinary thing is, that imputation into the snobbery of the liberal arts, the contempt for using your hands, the contempt for the shop floor, um, but associated with this idea of virtue. That the professional's job is to administer virtue. In other words, clearly, if you're a clergyman, uh, you believe in certain articles of religion. If you're a doctor, you practice the hypocritic oath, I think, which is best described as a hypocritical oath, and so on. Um, why aren't we all picking up on these references? Why do we have the situation in which Morecambe midwives who have recently become a profession, tell women how they must give birth. The whole origins of the scandal of the Morecambe midwives is in the false professionalization of midwives. These, in other words, what I'm really trying to say is we all do a job. There is only one way in which you do a job honestly. It is being paid directly for it. The problem with the professions is that they've, er- they've, they've erected this complete apparatus of phoniness. That you st- have you noticed you know, when you go to a doctor, oh dear me, you don't actually, he doesn't actually, private doctor, he doesn't touch the money. It's very carefully moved to one side. Whereas, of course, the only thing that keeps us honest and straightforward and dealing as we should be dealt with is that relationship of client person, me, paying, and the person providing. This then again takes us to the fundamental problem. I'm actually addressing the relationship between politics as it's understood by Aristotle and the relationship of politics as it's understood by Plato. 
What the elevation of the professional has done is to elevate the notion of the, the, uh, of the expert who knows better than everybody else. And it actually embeds it universally. The absolute catastrophe is the professionalization of politics itself. The behavior of Parliament under the leadership of Burko and Grieve and whatever in that terrible period of, 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 you've already had a debate on the effects of Theresa May, is absolutely typical expert behavior. If you hadn't actually noticed, the line of divide between Remainer and Lever is the distinction between profession and trade. The professional elites which have taken over now are a monopoly, and they are, they are, of course, equipped with profound self-righteousness, and they look down and they sneer upon the rest of us. This is why, coming home, um, what happened to me was able to happen to me. This attitude of mind of, if you like, applied virtue, let's call it again by its proper name, applied virtue has taken over everything from ice cream, Ben and Jerry's, the Coots Bank, which bothers to illuminate itself in the colours of the rainbow flag. Can you imagine anything more demented? To, of course, every university, to every learned society, to every professional body. This is profoundly corrupting. Most institutions should not, I'm going to again, say something that's so contrary to the spirit of the time, but that's my job. Most institutions should not have values. Morals are for us. The, the moral is for the individual. Otherwise, otherwise, you get legislated moral uniformity. You get the imposition of a moral code. You get an inquisition. You get public burning. And that is what is going on now. And you can see it, as I said, simply everywhere you look. But we, have, we haven't finished with this absolute disaster. The disaster is not simply that all business has been neo-professionalized. Those of you who are in jobs know this. You have HR departments which behave as though they were running a profession. They require you to subscribe to company ethics. It's, not, it's much worse than that. Because, of course, we simultaneously have a bureaucratic state. And the catastrophes are when the professions and bureaucracy meet. Why is the NHS the absolute undiluted catastrophe that it is? Because it is both a bureaucracy, which doesn't mean a civil service. It means a ruling administrative elite linked up with this sense of professional arrogance. And the, the whole behavior at the moment, for example, um, of GPs is as entitled as the worst members of the French Ancien Regime. Um, and, and frankly, I would administer the same treatment to them. There is again the police. The police are profession. Think about it. Think about the creation of a college of policing. These are deranged and profoundly dangerous notions. It is only because of that and not of legislation that we have non-hate crime. I was guilty of a non-hate crime for saying the word damn. Right? Pardon? Well, indeed, damn the woke. Let's, but but so, this is, I think you're beginning to get, well, I hope you're beginning to get my point. What we have done, we have walked blindfold into a new form of society, which is corrupting from top to bottom, and which ensnares us like an irresistible spider's web. Uh, it makes it virtually impossible to escape from. I mean, look at it. What, when, again, um, let me just give an example of my own self, because it's, it's worth ending on. Um, I was an author. I was banned by my publishers. What happened with the Society of Authors? They'd already signed up to Black Lives Matter. Ludicrous. 
Therefore, it couldn't act as my trade union and showed no intention of doing. What about my literary agent, whose job it was to fight uh, a publisher that was behaving like that? They'd signed up to Black Lives Matter too and banned me. What about the Royal Historical Society? Under the shameless, shameless leadership um, of, uh, uh, of Margot Finn, they'd si- a learned society had signed up to Black Lives Matter two years ahead of everybody else. It is, universities have, Cambridge, Cambridge, my university, which I'm ashamed now to own, Cambridge gives scholarships on the basis of people's skin colour. That is what the Storms' scholarships are. On no other basis whatever, a white person cannot get those scholarships. This is the measure of shame, and it is a measure of shame, and it is something that most people somehow decide it is good. This is the ultimate delusion of what I'm talking about. It's all been done for the best of possible reasons. Thank you.